Alrighty, welcome to the PSBS, this is a PlayStation Pool Session Podcast. I'm your host, Coach T, PS and Value Buster Coach. Here is... Andrew Arenas, double S. And... EJ Spun 61, Emmett Watkins Jr. Yes, Emmett Spun this. Now, I forgot, do you, I forgot if you said your username first or your name. Yeah, I switched it up. I usually say the name first. Yeah, I got a little thrown off there. That is your real name. <laughs> you, you, Whoa, you, live, you, live by, you live by your username. You live by your username, like that, like that other guy that we had with the uh, rocket science equation. Yeah, it's, it's just pronounced like... Day Spun Six One. The one is silent. <laughs> oh no, I was talking about the guy that we had Ryan last our... week. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He uses that God, formula that as his uh, professional like name. We did like fighting tournaments. Yeah. So God bless him with that name. <laughs> He's gonna win that tournament, man. He's gonna get that on a trophy. <laughs> Um, but anyway, this week, or well, we had an episode yesterday, so we're already back. Um, the, we'll dub this episode 64 because very special episode, very exciting episode. Um, the PlayStation Sony conference just ended, and um, I know we talked yesterday about doing a Ubisoft one. Uh, we're just going to talk about the Sony one right now because it was just so big with announcements and games and just good stuff that we need to talk about, and I don't want to like have to balance time and stuff. So we're just going to focus on the Sony one and we'll might do Ubisoft one tomorrow or later or cover it n- next week with another episode with some other stuff. But uh, I don't know, but we need to talk about the Sony conference. Mm-hmm. Well, actually indeed um, Emmett went to the theater experience of watching it with an audience. Damn right. I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, you should tell us a little bit about that. How did, how did it uh, go for people right, well, that haven't gone? Well, this is like my third year straight doing it, so I've gone to every one. Um, it is kind of strange where you expect it to be way more polished than how the trailers and everything make it look. Makes it look like a legit event. It It's kind of janky where you get there and it's like, oh, where do we line up? And you don't know where anything is until you go inside. And, oh, they've been lining up inside. But last year we were lining up outside. There were some inconsistencies there. But uh, we eventually got in line. And then once the actual event started, everything went perfectly. Um, honestly, when it came to the actual event starting on time and everything and getting people into the theaters, this was probably the best year that they've had. Um, last year they were – putting people into theaters up till the end and then they had to put some people on the floor because there were so many people Jeez, yeah. and then our stream actually cut out last year during the batman arkham knight demo so it was oh. like or i think that was the first year but um, oh that must have been the first year yeah yeah arkham um was already out or well ex- yeah out. yeah they've had they've had problems with their stuff in recent years so especially when this one started and that uh conductor came out i was like oh my god this isn't the conference. This is like they accidentally put on some like orchestra event for it was some one other of those thing. Fathom events. Yeah, I thought it was a Fathom event. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they fucked this over again. But no, everything went off perfectly. We didn't have any problems during the stream, and uh, we all lost our damn mind at a whole bunch of stuff. Except mm-hmm. I was the only one who screamed my head off when I saw a Sony Ben logo. But um, yeah, yeah, it was great. Is I recommend anyone who's close to a theater yeah. do that next year because there's something special about seeing it with people who are all there for the same reason. Yeah, and uh, probably here's one thing that me and Cody w- and uh, probably some other people want to know: um, Did you get any goods, any goodies? Um, yeah, they gave us a couple goods. Uh, so every year we've gotten a small little poster about the size of like a really big like laptop. Um, so that poster's kind of cool. We got a little collectible trading card. Uh, if you went Ooh. to the PlayStation Experience, they had a whole deck of trading cards to collect. Did. And we got an exclusive one of those here at this event. And the big thing, well, before I get to the big thing, uh, they also gave us a, a drinking cup that was like, it's a pretty huge cup. It's like a big gulp type size. Yeah, the drinking cup they advertised on the PlayStation blog. Exactly. And um, it's, it's funny because they had so many of these extra cups and cards and posters. Like, they were just throwing them at people before they left. So I actually have five cups, and I just gave one to each member of my family. So yeah, that's send cool. Me one. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I take it from you. I probably could have taken a whole sleeve if I thought about it, but... um. Yeah, uh, but the big thing they gave us is they gave us each a badge with a, on a lanyard, and that gave us a code, and that code gave us a couple of uh, digital goodies, Ooh. gave us uh, $10 of PSN money, <gasps> uh, oh. a Horizon Zero Dawn PS4 theme, Ooh. 
Wow. Um, it gave us some micro. It actually gave us some weirdly specific stuff, like microtransactions and like MLB the Show and oh, okay. uh, like one or two other first party games. And then we get a free copy of the first TMNT movie from 2014. Oh, okay, very <laughs> so, odd. All right, yeah, very odd. So, um, yeah, that's what we got. So nothing actually game related, I think. But um, they already announced you can go play the Resident Evil demo soon. You can play the yeah, Lego demo soon. So. Too. Yeah, but we got some decent goodies. It was worth that's it, cool. and it was free after all. So, wow, exactly ten, ten dollar PSN. That's kick ass. I know. Last year it was five. So, all right, it's their mouth is. next year's fifteen, and then eventually hundred. <laughs> then the next year they just give you a Vita. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! That was, yeah, that's, you you just said the Vita more than the entire conference. I know. I was okay. We're gonna talk about that because holy, holy. But, hell, uh, I, I know Cody, the, the the pilot, the captain of the ship, but I just definitely wanted to hear how the overall experience of the PlayStation Theater experience went. And it seemed like it went pretty good. Was it a full house? Um, it was a full house. They had two two different theaters set up for it. The first theater filled up entirely, and the theater I was in was about halfway full. So um, it, I, would, I would consider that a full house, <laughs> oh, cool. even though there were two houses to fill. <laughs> it's a half house. <laughs> I'll accept that. You're in my house now. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, oh, it was a great boy. it was a great event all around. I'm definitely going back next year. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but yeah, that sounds cool. Like I said, I went, I went to the first year they did it, but they I haven't been able to go in the last two years. They don't put it anywhere near me anymore. Yeah, um, it's relatively far. But yeah, but anyway, so we watched at home live stream. Um, but yeah, this this conference was just amazing from beginning to end like it's just weird we don't get this it's too often from e3 oh and then especially from sony well not that sony has been bad but i mean you know just lately you know just haven't been really the best and it's weird because you know we had microsoft which just did a fantastic job as well um not to take away from any of that even though we won't go too in depth about the microsoft one but the microsoft conference was really well done and we're mm-hmm. really well together but with this you know, and especially after watching Ubisoft and then EA's uh, and, and Bethesda, Bethesda did great as well, as we talked about yesterday. Um, but with Sony's, I just feel like this is like a culmination of just like all of like the lessons learned of like how exactly to do like an E3 uh, press conference. And I feel like it hit on all the right notes correctly. Um, Literally, not really. Because they had the yeah, band really, playing. Yeah, you had the whole <laughs> orchestra. Notes. Um, you know, it was a little dark in the beginning. I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is this? What is this? It's like getting more intense. I'm like, yeah, it's got to be like some of God of War. Oh, yeah. I knew yeah. it was God of War, like, the whole time. Like, yeah, the way they had the orchestra playing, like, oh. like right when the orchestra came on, I thought they're going to start, like, like you know, get all serious and then start playing, like, the Crash Bandicoot theme or something. Um, but no, then they just start playing, like, some heavy stuff, like, it would be God of War. And I'm like, oh, they got to open God of War. Yeah. Oh, I, I felt it in my loins. I just knew. Because that's like one of the only PlayStation games you know off of the sound. So I was like, oh, there's an orchestra. That must be what this is for. And sure as hell it was. Yeah, because yeah, that was the thing, though, man. Like, the orchestra came on. They played for a bit. It was weird. <laughs> it's just weird, like, opening this thing with this big orchestra playing. It was, like, really, like, epic and, like, just this, like, uh, kind of like sony being this like oh look at us we're all mature and and sophisticated we got this orchestra (laughs) playing you know compared to ubisoft this morning when they had a bunch of people dance around like idiots to to (laughs) queen don't get me wrong queen is a great way to open a show it's just the you're seeing yeah i love that song yeah that's that's a great queen's great way to open a show just seeing those people dancing to it though was just weird and plus it's like just dance so it's not like anything you know special yeah Yeah. exactly Um, yeah, but then you get Sony like doing this, like, oh, we got this orchestra, epic music. You know, we got the guy from The Walking Dead composer up here doing this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, it's like, no, it's like a big, little, big planet in announcement. <laughs> 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 little planet, it's back, bitches. <laughs> little bit planet music. Yep, just creating oh, music levels. Do, 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 it's just do. a really weird sequel to beat on PSP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, yep, yep, Beats 2 for the PSP. We're not even developing it for the Vita. We're going to develop it for the PSP. <laughs> At this point, I wouldn't expect that. They <laughs> didn't even say that word once in the conference. Vita's, Vita's dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
I mean, this is all strictly, you know, PS4, PSVR. Um, yeah, PlayStation 4, specifically none of this uh, S model or another console, um, which we were already known about with the interview with good old Andrew House. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he said it wasn't going to be there. And- yeah, it wasn't going to be there. Yeah, there is stone. It wasn't there, so there's no room for um, it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like there was any room for it either. Um, didn't seem like something that was taken out at all last minute. It seemed like, but because that was so good about the structure about this thing, it was just game trailer after game trailer after game trailer. Well, there's some game demos too, like game demo, game demo, trailer, trailer, game demo, trailer, trailer, and there was just like almost no moments of a guy coming out on stage and just talking about the game. You know? Yeah, like, because. They let it all talk for speak for itself, basically. All these videos and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And as much as we like these devs and them having the spotlight, and it's great. I mean, although I will miss uh, as great as the presentation for uh, Detroit was. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that was great. No, David Cage. Yeah, you know what I'm alluding to. No, David Cage, so that I can mm. really know the emotion. Oh, oh. He'll, he'll be back. <laughs> He'll be back for like Paris I, week or no. something. I, I mean, yeah. wait, I mean, I don't know if he's even at E three. So I hope maybe if he needs to, if he's going to demo the game or something, I hope he gets to tell us about that emotion. <laughs> I, I, I need to know, and, and hopefully, if when I go to New York Comic Con this year, hopefully there's maybe like a Detroit panel or something, and then maybe I can go. And then you, you just walk again. into the panel and you cry for an hour. Because oh, of too I did, many emotions. I did that for the Beyond Two Souls one when I went, but he was talking about the heavy emotions that you're going to go through. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Think about the last time but, you lost a loved one. You'll feel that way this whole game. Mm-hmm, exactly. Uh, um, but but uh, yeah, I think for this, we should just kind of structure it down, like kind of how yeah, things went. Say, let's, yeah, let's back up and just start from the beginning, and we'll work our way up to the ending. Um, Indeed. Because I got it down in order what happened. So, yeah, like we said, they opened up with the big orchestra thing. We're like, okay, this is probably going to lead to God of War. And <laughs> the video started, and we saw this kid. And I'm honest, I thought it was Horizon. Me too. Like, uh, I, no, I didn't think I, it was Horizon. Because no. I was just like, no, they wouldn't open it with Horizon. I really thought it was Horizon. Like, I thought we were being introduced to the girl's brother because the dude had red hair yes. too. Yes, mm-hmm. I was you thinking know? that. I was like, no. oh, yeah, he's got his little coat. He's got his red hair. He's about to go in and see his sister, and they're going to go on a hunt or something. And then, no. You really thought that it yeah. was going to be Horizon? Yes. How did you like, not think it was Horizon? Uh, I didn't like, think it was just, Horizon one bit. Just like just when you're caught up in the moment and you're not thinking yeah. about structurally how they would set it up, that looks like a Horizon-type art style and whatnot. Yeah, I thought well, it was yeah, Horizon. Yeah, how the graphics are. Yeah. Dude, I thought yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really don't see how people wouldn't think it's Horizon those first like minute or two. But like I really, th- I thought it was Horizon. Yeah, like that was gonna be her brother or something. But then he goes in the house, and then nope, here comes Kratos out of the shadows <laughs> with his beard. <laughs> literally out of the shadows. Yeah, Old literally. man Kratos. Old man Kratos. He's he's he pulled a Dexter. You know, he faked his yeah. death, right. and now he's a lumberjack. All right, yeah, honestly. big old guy. <laughs> All right, can I ask this question real quick? Mm-hmm. About Kratos. Who who else doesn't think that mm-hmm. The Last of Us was written all over this game? Uh, uh, I mean, it felt like, a little like that, like in the mentor kind of thing and like the hunting aspect. But I don't I wasn't thinking overlay The Last of Us because The Last of Us, you know, it has such a different setting and different situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I both mean, of them are playing third person. Uh, as we could see from this God of War demo, notably, it's called God of War. Yes. It's not uh, God of War 4 um, that. It seems like it's a different, it's a different kind of game, and I, I kind of wish I would have maybe kind of hypothesis shared my hypothesis thoughts of like what hypothesis about what uh, a God of War four or what a uh, next gen, uh, current gen God of War would be, because ever since you know we've had, gosh, countless a lot of uh, God of War games that you know played that way, play the way of you know hack and slash, uh, giant spectacle, and whatnot. And as cool as that would have been on PlayStation 4, I mean, we did not wait all these years. And then for Santa Monica to have then a canceled game and then, you know, waiting even longer uh, for whatever this God of War game is going to be. I did not expect the same thing. Like, as great as that would have been of, like, having, like, a big old boss battle, more quick time events, yada, yada, yada. uh, I didn't think we were going to get the same thing. Because, yeah. like, you know, we had the trilogy of games. We had the PSP games. It's enough. Like, we don't yeah. need that same. And I think because the one that was the key one was Ascension. Because as, as Nia, that, as that showed off at E3, I, I mean, people were already getting kind of tired of it. So, 
Yeah. I'm so glad that God of War is advancing di- uh, differently. Yeah, yeah. Wa- yeah, watching this demo, I was, that's what I was thinking too. It's like after six games, this is exactly what this franchise needed. You know, this, this thing. Something where, different. Like, where, I mean, it's completely different. I mean, it's over the shoulder now. Mm. It's not a fixed camera like in the like in all the other games. It's over yeah. the shoulder. Um, there's uh, just there's exploration. You uh, there's XP because you saw like when you interact with things, it's like yes. oh plus twenty five for you. Yeah. Okay, I got something to say about that later on though. Oh, you know, plus yeah, 20, the XP. Yeah, the XP and like oh, you've discovered this location. So I'm like oh, so is it open world? Because like there's like the whole <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I think it might be open world. Like, and, I think they were hinting to that at the last shot where you see the big expanse of Yeah, the Possibly. The or it could be something along the lines of 2013's Tomb Raider, possibly, where it's not open world, but you're able to ex- explore yeah. uh, large areas, maybe. I, wouldn't, I mean, that would be something that maybe they would tout from the beginning, but I don't yeah, see it being fully open world, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it probably be like that. Yeah, it'd probably be something wide like linear. Yeah, yeah, wide linear. linear. Yeah. Um, so that'd be great. Yeah, that, that's gonna be fantastic. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, open world. I just don't see it because I mean, Horizons already got that deal locked. Yeah. But, um, but but yeah, but I I love this demo. I was just floored oh, yeah. by it. I was like, this is amazing. Like this is how exactly, good it looked. Yeah, how good it looked, and this is exactly what God of War needed. This franchise needed. Yeah, now because they because the biggest problem they had with that game is everyone was like, "Oh, Kratos is just a killing machine. He has no <laughs> why should you care?" But they they did the one thing like the best way to ground the character is to give him something to fight for again. So don't let him kill his family. Give him a son that he now, like has some humanity for. Now, now here's my question for this. So mm. is this? A full blown reboot where it's completely starting from scratch, or is it like some weird continuation of God of War three? Because because here's the thing: like Kratos looks older, okay, and he doesn't look that different from God of War three. Like he really looks True. like it'd be the same Kratos just with a beard. Um, so he's not like completely different character. Well, he's older. He's older. But that's what I mean, though. Is it a complete reboot or not? Because now it looks like it's North mythology because that's what it's been rumored. And that's what it kind of looks like. Cause we see the troll thing, we see just the mountains and everything. And it, and it hints. And we saw the writing, the writing looks like, you know, the Norse mm-hmm. Vikings and stuff. But here's the problem though. Cradle still has his Spartan stuff on. Like you see the own circle, like on his back where his yeah. wax goes. And like and the Spartan when, rage. Meeting. Yeah. Spartan rage is still called Spartan rage. So I'm like, so what oh. is it? Like, is, is it still continuing off of God of War three and just the Norse gods? Yes. So, over? Or like, I don't. It's really weird. Like, I don't, because that's what I was. I was hoping it's like a full blown reboot to where they don't have to worry about the the story of the other games. But I don't know. It still looks like it's there. You know, even I though, mean, I mean, they're marketing it as a reboot or at least a new beginning because, like we said, it's just it's called God of War. War. You know, no I mean, subtitle. Yeah, it's God of War. The more I think about it, the more I think about it, it might. Even though I actually do think it's going to be just a reboot there are very clear ways that they could make it work as an actual continuation of the story in three because if you think about it there's no one left to tell the story of god of war one through three because kratos kind of killed them all so it's not like someone can come back and say you have a dark past or something like that so maybe maybe after the end of three which was already hinted at that you know, they already hinted at what Kratos' fate was at the end of three. Maybe he went off to go be normal and to have a family, and maybe he lost his wife. Oh, he's like, and now he has a son. Oh, he's, he's like he's like Magneto in X Men Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it could be that <laughs> living out Except, in the woods, you know, the got tragedy, a beard but... and everything, <laughs> trying to be normal. Exactly. It could be it could be that type of story, so I don't want to put that out because it could be just God of War the project before they have an official name. So I don't want to say it's a reboot quite yet. We'll see what they do. Yeah, because that yeah. was because that was a weird thing about this too. Like they showed this whole demo on stage. There was, I mean, yeah, they had the orchestra introduction, but like there was no one talking first. It just went straight into this demo, and when it was done, that was it. No one came on stage <laughs> and talked about it. We didn't even see the Santa Monica logo. We didn't see nothing. They just moved on. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, well, we saw the new Sony Interactive Entertainment. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. But like, mm-hmm. we didn't see Santa Monica's logo before it. No one came on stage to talk about it saying God of War. Nothing. It was just, here you go. And that was it. So this game's coming it's out. This, this game is coming out whenever. <laughs> like, just, just. I mean, I see it as I see a 2017 game. Yeah, it's coming. It's, it's probably recent. out next year. But like, they're not even giving you like a window, like March 2017. No. <laughs> this is like. I yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're not seeing that until 18, probably. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's what's scary, too. Like, this might be, like, a fall 2017 game, and then guess what? Delayed March 2018? <laughs> Ah, uh, dude, look, well, we'll talk about what the later stuff to come later because, you know, as I criticized when we were speaking with, uh, that, talking about EA, um, just all the stuff that they so prematurely announced and then how disastrous it turned out uh, conference-wise just in terms of not showing anything new. Um, so it was great to have, you know, this full-blown demo um, ready for E3 and shown in spectacular fashion. Yeah, no, uh, no other additional details, at least so far. I mean, E3 is beginning tomorrow, technically, and uh, you never know. I mean, PlayStation will have their whole streams on Horizon. And I don't know if they'll have anyone from the team that worked on works on God of War, but uh, no, I see, tell, I guess I, I see, I see God of War being 2017. Um, I think mm. they really. I mean, despite uh, some contradictions, that will come up as we'll talk about later. Um, that I think the majority of the products that you saw today will land will will about land next year. So because I think some of these have been incubating for a long time, and I just, I think uh, they're ready. Some of them. Hmm. So okay. I just think I think at least a couple of them I think won't land in 2017. No, I, I was checking. There is an update on God of War from mm-hmm. Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah, it is not a reboot. Yeah. Ah, yes! <laughs> because we know Kratos' fate now in the end of God of War 3. Yeah, because it says right here, straight from San, San, uh, Sony St. Monica put an update saying, I knew I didn't want to simply reboot the franchise starting over the retelling of the origin story. I want to reimagine the gameplay, give the players a fresh perspective and a new tactical experience while delivering deeper into the emotional journey of Kratos to explore the killer, uh, compelling drama that unfolds when a immortal demigod makes a decision to change. So yes, this is the same Kratos from God of War 3. Holy hell. This is amazing. This game just shot up in my face. That sounded incorrect, but I'm just going to stick with it now that I've said it. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. It is not a reboot. It is the Kratos from God of War 3 now dealing with new stuff. That's crazy, man. I mean, that's good. I mean, well, they gave us God of War 3 remaster for a reason. <laughs> yeah. We ain't getting so him did. no more. So then we get to know, you know, what happened at that time, you know, because, like, I mean, he killed, he died, and then we had that post credit scene, and then, you know, his fate was TBA. So now we know his fate. Now it's been aid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it's been aid. <laughs> yeah, he's moved on. He got him a new family. He's living for... Like, uh, presumably years long time i mean he's a demigod so he could probably live like forever if he wanted hundreds to. of years i mean he still ages but like just slowly to where maybe 100, 100, 100 or so years went by and he's just now kind of getting old boy an older kratos yeah this new god of war god of war man it looks fantastic yeah, it, this battle looks, axe now <laughs> this was definitely worth the wait i mean goodness i mean god of war 3 came out 2010 um, you know, Santa Monica, like I said, has already had some trials and tribulations with the that RPG that they canceled, right? And yeah, that unfortunate uh, series of events. Oh, well, they have. It looks like there might be RPG elements in this one. Yeah, right. Because that exactly, was the right. thing. Like that's what they described their their canceled game as an open world RPG with magical elements. And guess what we have right here with God of War? <laughs> it's magical. It's RPG and possibly open world. So hmm. yeah. It's just not a new IP. It's not a new IP. They're like, mm, but they're kind of relaunching this as like, yeah, a new relaunching thing. it as God of War. Like, did Sony sit there and go, you know what, you know what this make means? it God of War? Yeah, you know Kratos. this looks cool, but just throw Kratos in there. You can do that, right? And Sony Santa Monica just went, um, I guess. <laughs> you think about it like that? Wait, I, shoot. I mean, yeah, we, that's what the game was supposed to be, correct? Yeah, they had the battle. They had the Battlestar Galactica writer and everything. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Mm. This is it. I mean, like, hey. this is probably it. Like, this was probably their canceled game. They just reworked it to be a God of War. Hey, I I accept that because yeah, it that's looks not bad. Amazing. It's just <laughs> anyway. it's just we're seeing the the elements of that, the resources oh. and stuff from it. But how do you guys like that in both? Well, even though it's not God of War four, but it's like the fourth like main. In the core series, excluding the PSP, it's fantastic PSP games. And now um, we also, if, in case you saw the Gears of War four trailer, so now how do you feel like both both of the protagonists of those games both are now G- old and, yeah. and they have both, a son? Yeah, and they're both uh, God <laughs> abbreviation. At least you're still playing as one of them. <laughs> yeah, but like, 
how, how I mean, like both of them are coming full circle. It's kind of crazy. Like Marcus, like when I saw Marcus at Phoenix at that Microsoft thing, I was like, oh, because I, I you, because you know, I I had connections with like Marcus Phoenix, you know, playing Gears of War one, but then oh yeah, that but guess what? That got curb stomped once I saw Kratos come out of the shadows. I was like, oh. I've never seen Kratos like at the end of that demo where he's like where the son's like freaking out about how he had to kill an animal and he's like about to like be like nurture him or like comfort him and then he like stops and takes the knife out instead. It's like Kratos is trying to learn how to love again. This is so <laughs> crazy. Like Kratos, I never thought I would say those words. Like Kratos talked more in that demo than like all the games. <laughs> the whole game. <laughs> aside from screaming. <laughs> yeah, aside from screaming. But like exactly. even when he screams, he still doesn't talk that much like in the other games. Like and when he does he screams, but this one he's talking normal and he's just talking, having regular conversations. I'm just like, oh yeah, Kratos. Learning to be a, a character. This is crazy, man. Like, this might probably be, like... Uh, I, I need to go get God of War 3 Remastered, like, tomorrow. Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Like, But then I'm going to play God of War 3 Remastered. I'm going to be like, dang it, I want to walk around. I want to, like... <laughs> I want to move the camera. I want to move, move the camera. I want to move the camera. Um... Oh gosh, that was too much. I can't take it. Like, no. and then, and then, okay, and then that's the crazy part. Guess what? That opened the show, and <laughs> and when they opened and we got a war, I was like, oh, they can't. They, they opened God of War. <laughs> They're gonna be able to follow this up. Guess what? They did. <laughs> <laughs> they kept the train rolling because right after that, they followed up with Sony Ben's new game. <laughs> finally, Sony after ben six games. years, finally, yes, Sony so Ben's been. Yeah, We're, just we haven't they haven't put out a game since. Four years, four years, four yeah. years. 2011, late 2011. Yeah, well, Christ. I mean, they did put out Fight for Fortune, but, you know. Oh, my. <laughs> you know I got to mention Fight for Fortune when we talk about something. Yes, you do. It is a game. It is a game. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they we haven't heard nothing from them basically since Golden Abyss, and we're just like, when's their next game? What's your next game? And we kept hearing the rumors and the rumblings that they are working on a new game, and it's a PS4 game. And here it is. We saw it today uh, called Days Gone, um, and it is a post-apocalyptic zombie looking thing you play as the guy from the force unleashed um mm -hmm. yeah I, like, I remember i was like i was sitting watching her like yeah that's the guy from force unleashed okay in another video game um that's a but catch i didn't pick that up at all you didn't yeah, realize that was him? Was, I'm, wow. i was just happy it wasn't troy baker yeah i was like <laughs> not that we don't like troy baker it's just we just didn't want to see another sony exclusive with troy baker as a lead oh my god yeah i honestly to be honest when that trailer was going on i thought okay so bend already did a game with the naughty dog property and that totally had a last of us vibe to it i thought they were going to announce last of us 2 by sony ben i thought it was coming <laughs> I'm happy with what oh, I got, but hope no. Hell. Yeah, this whole thing was actually going to be Last of Us for Vita, developed by Sony Ben. <laughs> oh God, I'd cry. <laughs> you start crying in the theater. People would start buying Vitas. So I would be happy. I'd flood that <laughs> shit with my tears. Just be like, oh. you need to call. You need to start a new website. It's called Kickstarter. It's called Tear Starters. Like, how much can you make? How much will you're willing to cry for this game to happen? <laughs> well, I was um, watching the channel on Twitch, and a lot of people were like saying, like, what if this is like a potential like Last of Us spinoff? But no. no, it's not the same. I mean, that'd be really neat, but I mean, it's not the same. Like we see, like what he was fighting was like full blown zombies. These weren't like infected, like we see in um, you know, dude. Yeah, that was don't no, let, let, let me because there's different types of zombies for like every. You have zombies, but yeah, yeah, you have your like your freaking like generic ass Walking Dead zombies, and then you have freaking what uh, my favorite kind of zombie, which is in the uh, 2013 movie World War Z. Um, oh God, even though that movie's zombies. not that great. But the worst I zombies. Love, Sorry, I dude. like those kind of zombies, but that's the one that he's fighting. I know that's he's the ones fighting, you're like fighting. Like the really but... fast ones, and like the ones that like crowd in each other and all that. I'm like, holy crap, it was intense. That's, like, that's what like, I mean, though. They're not the same from the Naughty Dog infected thing. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm trying oh, to yeah. say. So this is not set in the world of The Last of Us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Um, Unless they advance and just told it. Like, oh, they can move fast. And here's the thing, though. As good as this looks, though, you, it still has to get over that hump of it's another post-apocalyptic game, though. <laughs> you know, that yeah. already looks like Sony's main yeah, apocalyptic franchise. Was, yeah, I know. Sony just is known for that big Last of Us thing now. Now they're trying to do it again with a new IP. And don't get me wrong, this game will probably be great and amazing. I'm just saying, though, it does have to get over that. You know, it's another apocalyptic game. Because I mean, how many do we see just this morning at at, at Microsoft? We saw two this morning I at know. Microsoft. We saw State of Decay two and Dead Rising four this morning. 
So that's sort of uh, two. And now we're getting Days Gone, which looks great, but it's still another post apocalyptic zombie game. I think I think it's a little bit different. I mean, Last of Us is like so unique in itself, even despite you know the post apocalyptic uh, genre uh, beaten to death at this point. But I don't know, Days Gone. I mean, it's a different kind of situation. Yeah, typical zombie apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. And then you know we still don't know a lot about the main character and his deal, and you know the whole biker uh, gang like- uh, trying to. Re- yeah, that's cool. It's like, it's like you know how much yeah. more copies this game would have sold if you just would have switched him out with Daryl from The Walking Dead. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> it's the same it's him, it's Daryl, he's riding a motorcycle, you can go around and kill Wait, zombies. That's too much too much Norman Reedus for one press conference. Well, we're gonna talk about him yeah. in a bit. Yeah, you exactly. get to fully see Norman Reedus. <laughs> <laughs> right? You do. But uh um, yeah, we're gonna talk about him in a bit. But um but yeah, I mean, it looks great, and then it was kind of weird the way they did it too. They showed the trailer, which was interesting, but then at the end they're like, "Okay, let's go back to this for a second now. I'll show you the demo." And yeah, that was a little odd. It was a little like, odd, but I think I it was, didn't just show it. Well, like, I think it was, it was because cool. of pacing, because they just showed yeah, a long pacing. demo of God of War, so they probably didn't want to follow up that demo with another demo. You know, uh, they had a rights in later on, so it would have been just too much, too long on too many games. Yeah. They kind of wanted to introduce to get you interested and then show you the gameplay at the end. And the gameplay looked great, though, because yeah. you, get, you get the open world, you get to ride good. your bike. Uh, very physics-based, um, which I loved because, like you said, you just kind of get that World Z moment when, like, a whole swarm of them come after you. <laughs> and, then I, and they just fall down? Yes, oh, that's so when great. They, when they break through the bridge because there's just so many of them. Like, I love that. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you seeing that physics thing. And then when you, like, uh, set it on fire and how it slowly, you know, the, the, the fire slowly spreads. Like, when he hops oh. out the window, by the time he gets around to the second window, the fire's already reached then and it's kind of spreading through the building. You know? It all looks so good, the way the gameplay was flowing and everything, and how that was all real time. It was just, that looked good. Like, yeah, I'm accepting like, that fact of, you know, another post-apocalyptic zombie game. I mean, that, that I felt like it did have a unique spin on the genre for the way it looked like it played and everything. I think it I all feel. looked fantastic. Like, I was very happy uh, with yeah. Sony Ben's uh, presence. That was well worth the wait of how mm-hmm. long we had to wait. Yeah. And, then, uh, look, uh, and I feel like that's gonna be its that's gonna be its unique gameplay hook because the because even though it looks like The Last of Us that was more about a specific story and a specific you know thing you're going through this seems like it's gonna be way more just based on the systems and interacting with the open world and everything's gonna be different for every player all those buzzwords it seems like it's gonna be really cool and carve it'll out have the features. story too that you'll care about right I mean it's oh yeah definitely the premise you know him yeah. But it, it seems like it's going to be way less less scripted, way less scripted. Yeah, you get to, and it seems, and like on top of that, I can't forget it looked fun, like it, and intensely oh, yeah. playing. It looked fun. I, w- I can't wait to like do that. And just how many NPCs were there too was incredible too. Um, yeah, that was just whew, that was mind blowing. That's like power of the PS4, getting all those characters and enemies on screen. I know that Dead yeah. Rising three moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's great. And again, no release date. No, not even a 2017. So we'll see when it's coming. Mm-hmm. Wait till PSX. Wait till PSX. We'll hear more. Um, really interesting. Let's see, we see more of that. Let's see what did they follow up with that? Loading up. Uh, yeah, and then oh, after that, they follow that up with The Last Guardian. Was shown again. Uh, the Last Guardian, yes. a nice trailer. Yeah, we got coming a nice out new trailer the same day as Titanfall Two. No, indeed, it's coming indeed. out the twenty oh. fifth of October. Oh, so is that like oh. a couple of days before? That's Titanfall like uh, that's like four days after Battlefield One, but three days oh. before um, Titanfall Two. So it comes out like that Friday. Jeez. That's like a shooter sandwich. Get your bird dog in the middle. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, wow. Crazy. I don't like that the trailer kind of spoiled that there is no, there's not, he's not the last guardian because apparently there's two. Uh, yeah, hot dog v dog action. Well, it could be a faux last guardian. Uh, another, uh, it could be a faux last guardian. So it, probably- it could be the first guardian. Yeah, you could still be the okay, last I'm one. That's the first the one. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is interesting. I mean, we're finally seeing a release date for Last Guardian. Um, and it won't get delayed. At this point, you can't put it. They, Sony wouldn't be stupid enough to put a date on The Last of Us, uh, not Last of Us, Last Guardian, if they weren't sure that this was coming out. You know? Yeah, I agree. And it was kind of funny because even in the theater I was in, we watched that entire trailer and no one gave a single bit of applause until we saw that release date. And then we just yeah. lost our damn minds. 
Oh yeah, because I like if if they would have like if like if another like 2017 logo would have came out after that trailer, people would have just been like booing. You know, at this point, because yeah. it's like this game has been delayed and just not delayed, but like just went off the radar for so long that the, that Sony would be stupid to bring this back. You know, bring it back out and not have a release date or not have a firm release date. You know, so it's it's going to hit that October 25th release date. Um. And, and like you just said, it is in a weird spot. It's between these two huge shooters. And granted, this is going for a completely different market, you know, um, they are. compared to those two. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this game turns out. You know, it's been development for so long. And you see how it turns out and everything. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. But, yep. And what else? Let's see. And they follow that up with more Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay. A new demo, because uh, that oddly enough they didn't show the release date at the end, even though they confirmed it the other day it was February. What? You guys remember? I think it was like twenty seventh. I think it's twenty seventh, twenty something. For Horizon, um, correct? Yeah, February twenty eighth is when Horizon Zero Dawn comes out. So yeah, so we got this new gameplay demo. Uh, looks really great. We see a lot of new elements. We see the kind of the open worldness of it. We saw the map. We saw you can actually ride the robot things. <laughs> you uh, riding yeah, a, that blew my mind. Yeah, riding a robot elk. Um, and then they were just like, oh, you can like really hunt these things and um, sneak up on them or whatever. And then like you can like tag them and see what what their weaknesses, what parts they have, and then harvest those parts and craft stuff. And that was great. Yeah. yeah, the thing really, that struck me about yeah. uh, Horizon is that we got to see really how the gameplay elements of it and this RPG, uh, action RPG, correct, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. Was yeah, that, same, same. Cool? Because like, you're looting things and you're having the dialogue tree and you're doing all that. Yeah, the dialogue so, tree. So that's neat. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, I was really impressed by it overall. I was just impressed by... I feel like a lot of people saw her, like a lot of people who are into games, which is us, they saw that Horizon demo and they're like, oh, that looks really cool. I think this demo really helped to show that this isn't just, you know, your average game. This is like an open world RPG with dialogue trees and crafting systems. Mm-hmm. Had a lot of Far Cry 3 vibes, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Felt like, you know, Skyrim meets Far Cry 3, which is <laughs> <laughs> the best praise I could give to a game, really, because those are some of my favorites. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Just hurry up and bring February on. <laughs> yep. Gotta wait till February. Let's see that action and everything. Mm. I'm wondering when oh. we're gonna talk about Detroit. I want to talk about Detroit. Detroit. We're getting there. No, I'm just being quiet. Is that what I... the show next after that? Oh no, because just, so. just oh okay. I was getting there. No, I just went quiet for a second. I was trying to see is Andrew still there? Because he was getting kind of quiet. I was trying to make sure oh. we didn't lose him. Uh oh. Yeah, you, you're ac- you're actually sounding a little uh, staticky. Me? No, Kodatai. Oh. Where are oh. you, buddy? Do you think I might have to call again or something? I don't know. No, I'm just saying you went quiet. I don't know if we just lost you or uh, or what. Oh. But well, I can at least hear you. you. Stopped, at least you stopped recording, right? I didn't stop recording. We're a live podcast. Oh, oh. oh Lord. I think because... Right now, I hear Andrew fine, but Koti, you're con- you're coming in like very low quality. Alrighty, so yeah, we might have slight technical uh, trouble right there. So there's a jump in hearing us talking about technical problems. <laughs> just, just, just briefly, just briefly, What's you guys talking about it? Like I said, we're we're live and we're not the most professional podcast. We don't we just strive to. You know, I was time. close to opening a soda can, but <laughs> in that time when we had a little break, I opened the soda can. Hey, right. didn't show up on mic. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I'll do oh, my best not to get the slurps on the yeah, mic, but we, I don't slurp. Uh, we've had you eat cookies on the show, though. We did have. Uh, well, yeah, I eat cookies. You're eating cookies on the show, like we can hear you. Yeah, eating I was, cookies. <laughs> no, I, I think that might have been chips. Actually, chips. you're eating something. We can. Yeah, hear you I was eating. eating and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just came across like a complete dude. Like I was just like, <laughs> like do we have? Yeah. A do we have Evan on or something that day? Is that why I was like, eh, it's okay to eat while I'm doing a podcast? Oh yeah, Uncharted Four. I think I think <laughs> it was it? that one. 
Oh wait, no, it was the one. Oh before no, that. it was the Atari Four. I was definitely not eating. I mean, it was drinking, but like I was like. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I wasn't drinking alcohol. Just I wasn't. <laughs> now, I don't know if they'll ever have a drug podcast. Hey, you know, you know what? Who can't drink? Androids. No. Mm. Just like the ones in Detroit become yes. human. Yes, that was the game <laughs> that was shown off after Horizon demo. Uh, mm-hmm. We saw some gameplay, uh, this weird, cool trailer where they basically kind of explain how the game works. It works like a lot of Quantic Dream games. Um, oh. Heavy and, rains, bread and butter. Yep. Choices, <laughs> decisions, alternate uh, branching paths. And they showed you a web of just this one scene had all these different outcomes based on these little choices you can do. Yeah, it looked good, man. It looked really yeah, cool. it did. Definitely the advancement from... I mean, yeah, it's the same kind of deal that Quantic Dream has been doing for the past two games. But this is definitely the advancement from Quantic Dream that I have been waiting for. Because, you know, we got the fantastic Until Dawn last year. And I was just like, man, this puts Quantic Dream to shame. Or just... Not to shame. Just to, you know... They got to wake up. To top this, this they got to fight for interactive it Interactive drama. Um, well, not interactive drama, but... You know what I mean? The type of interactive uh, storytelling. <laughs> interactive games. storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Interactive storytelling. Games. So, you know, I wanted Quantic Dream to up their game. Yes. Um, they did here. And now they're, it seems like they're probably at the top now because like this was this, fantastic. I yeah. love this. Love this. Um, cause that was like a recurring thing though. at this event, um, with something too, like this just shows the, the, um, how strong Sony is with their like studios. Where like uh, well, other than God of War, all these trailers just open with like pretty much the studio logo, and just that logo got everybody excited. Yes, you know, like you see the you see the Sony Ben logo, everybody gets excited. You see the Quantic Dream logo, you get excited. You see, um, you know, all these other game logos we're gonna get to when we talk about it. But like when those game studio logos come, you just get so excited because like yes, it's the next game by these guys, you know. And uh, that was the thing when I saw the Quantic Dream logo, I was so excited. I was like, yes, because I love Quantic Dream, one of my favorite <laughs> developers. Uh, mm-hmm. Even even though they only have three games, <laughs> well, I think three games. Uh, which one of them still hasn't got a PS4 version yet? No, Indigo Prophecy. Uh, Indigo no. Prophecy did that PC remaster, but they never did the they never done a PC the PS4 version. And it was on the iOS, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think Indigo. it was iOS version. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe once we get closer to the release of Detroit mm-hmm. Become Human, that'll be like a pre order bonus. Pre order Detroit Become Shh. Humans and play uh, Indigo Prophecy now on PS4. Oh my god, it could be like one of those, yeah. That's a PX, PSX type announcement right there. Yeah, because well, as a recurring thing we've been seeing at E3 this year is like pre- pre-order this and you get the first game now or something like that. Recore has a weird one where you get Banshee Kazooie nuts and bolts. Yeah, it's like okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm like what? It's like what? Okay. Oh, uh, on then, top of that, I mean, I played that game. That game's not very good. And so. then the Xbox gave away Limbo today, but now I was like, I own that on PS4 and Vita because of Plus. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a shame. I mean, that game's not ever coming, right? Or is it like a timed console exclusive? Are you talking about Inside? <laughs> yeah, for Inside. Yeah, the Inside. Is it coming? Yeah, I think it's a time exclusive. Well, I mean, I don't think they've announced if it's a timed exclusive, but those types of games typically don't stay on one think, console I forever. Think that's what they, they didn't say it today, but I think when they first announced it last year, they said first to console on Xbox. Which okay, basically I can imagine. Time exclusive. Oh, I'm probably just thinking of Cuphead. That one's exclusive. Cuphead is exclusive to Microsoft. That is a Microsoft uh, Studio production. Still no date on that game. Can you believe it? Yeah, Cuphead, that elusive <laughs> Xbox game. And, like, they barely gave it any time. And, like, I wonder if Microsoft just maybe there's something in that game that's just not very good. Something is just despite, not coming together on that game. It's just yeah, because, so long. Like, despite its incredible aesthetic, right? No, um, no. I think I think the game's fine. I think they just added so much more to it because originally the game was just a boss rush game where you would just fight different bosses and that was it. But now they've gone back and added like actual platforming Platform. yeah. and more gameplay. That section I was like bosses. a little iffy on. I was like watching that. I was like, uh, like I, I wasn't I wasn't sure. But just just the way how it was designed, the overall platforming, I wasn't too crazy about. But. I don't know. But anyway, beyond uh, Detroit become human. <laughs> beyond beyond All right, uh, that's that a their last podcast. game. No, I was about to say no, beyond was their last game, Beyond Two Souls. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but uh their new game, uh, Detroit Become Human, which I'll probably end up just calling uh Become Human, probably what I'll just call it. Um not not that I have anything against Detroit. I just we talked about this already. It's just I don't know. It just feels a little weird to throw that in there. Well, actually, it's, now kind of knowing the context of it and how many like you play as multiple characters, maybe it just makes sense that you know says the place. 
like where yeah but i still feel like it's like la noir or like i guess but i still feel like uh become human would have been just a better just single title you know yeah Um, makes more sense and like i said it's not that we have anything as detroit it's just like if you had done anything if you had done like los angeles become human or new york become human still would have been just eh you know just just call it become human Mm -hmm. um but anyway yeah, this looks really great. Like I said, I love Quantic Dream, and I love like we're seeing the branching past. We're seeing the thing, and there's been there's an update on the PlayStation blog uh, just now from David Cage himself writing, um, <laughs> talking about the emotions and stuff, and how like you know <laughs> everything matters. Like you said, the characters can die in the game, and once they die, the story continues onward uh, without them, like we saw in Heavy Rain. Um, so yeah, so it's it's really cool. Really excited. Uh, again, no release date, no window. So uh, just kind of whenever. Mm-hmm. And yeah. this one, this one seems more decision based because that was the thing though. Like, I liked Beyond Two Souls because I know a lot of people were kind of iffy on that game. Um, mixed, mixed. Yeah, I liked it uh, because there was some really crazy stuff they did with it. It's just the one thing I didn't like with was like the really uh, crazy narrative because it was all out of order for like no reason. Um, and the fact that. Mm, yeah, there's multiple endings, but like it wasn't like from scene to scene. It felt like your decisions mattered. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was like the thing about Beyond Two Souls. Like I played the first like hour or so, and I'm playing it in the chronological order because you can choose in the beginning. And I decided to play in chronological chronological order. So it seems like the story is like falling in the appropriate place. Uh, so I guess even if it was out of context for me and I didn't know that, but. I don't know, I found it very odd that that game... I mean, well, Heavy Rain does it too, where like you play a scene and you know it goes to the loading screen, but like, I don't know, it seems like it goes really quickly, like certain scenes that it just goes to the loading screen. I find it very well, that's the, choppy. You're play, well, you're playing, a lean, you're playing the linear way, where, not the linear way, the chrono, chronological way, because the, the game's, chronological. Because the game's supposed to be presented as like fractured memories or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's out of order, and it's like some segments are like really short. Mm. Um, and if you're playing in order, that's probably going to mess with the like just structure they had originally of like how long each segment is. Yeah. So you're playing it probably. That's probably why it might feel like that way to you. Yeah. But I don't know. That's so strange. It's definitely a strange game that I've yes. played so as so far. It's very out there. Um, yes, it is. I'll probably get around to it some more. Um, same like gameplay as it was, kind of like in Heavy Rain and all that. Um. Graphics look pretty good. I mean, especially for that time. I mean, seeing it run on PlayStation Four it looks good. Um, uh, so, it, yeah, I'll get know. to it more. That game had some of the best graphics I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Beyond two, especially that one part where you're like outside in the desert. Oh, running desert, in the desert. Oh, I was area. gonna say the train. The train. Yeah, the one train was, was good was too. But like, no, me. like when you're in the like the Afghanistan or whatever, and it's like out in the open during the day, I was like floored at the graphics, just the lighting and just the way the textures were. I was like, what? Couldn't believe that seeing that on PS3. So I awesome. can imagine what that scene would be like on PS4. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm totally motivated now more than ever to like go to Beyond two souls now and then probably go pick up, go tomorrow and go pick up uh God of War three remastered. Like I <laughs> so just, like, I, I, I wonder- need my, Aquatic Dream and God of War fix. I wonder if this is gonna happen with all these games now. Like, oh, once we get close to God of War, pre-order God of War and get God of War three remastered now for free or whatever, or pre-order Detroit and get uh and get uh Beyond Two Souls remastered for free. I mean, mm-hmm. you can get God of War three remastered for like twenty bucks now, so yeah, that wouldn't be yeah. too hard for them to do. But it's also not too hard to buy yourself. So <laughs> yeah, you know, I wonder if maybe depends. some sales of these games will maybe spike because of these. Yeah. A little bit, because uh, yeah. well, not spike incredibly where they're going to make the top ten in the MPD, but you know, just you know, just, oh yeah, yeah, the sales of it would kind of shoot up because you know, like oh, I mean, I'm as excited. I mean, I already have Beyond Two, uh, Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain uh, remastered on PS4, but yeah, I want to go get God of War. Um, I kind of feel like playing Killzone again, but that's not really remotely related to. Um, oh I, yeah, um, I want to see that logo. <laughs> but I don't know if there's anything else to really talk about Detroit. I mean, it showed that one scene. It was really cool playing it out. Um, just to let Morrison announce it later. Mm-hmm. But now another thing that they had, I think it was after that, right? It was Kojima? No. The next thing after oh, that. Was, the next thing that? after that was probably, I'm trying to think if this is my favorite announcement or not. 
really the next one because i know i think i know for sure what my favorite oh crash house bandicoot Ooh, crash oh, crash bandicoot oh. i'm trying to remember what's my favorite announcement of the night i think i'm sure what's my favorite Ooh. announcement of the night but we're not to it yet um this oh, is well, probably either this is this re, this one right here is probably my second or third favorite announcement of the night um okay. the next thing they showed after um detroit become human was resident evil 7 yes, yes. Resident Evil Seven. this was yeah, i can't forget that super excited oh, I was, my this God. was such a great trailer um because i didn't know what the hell this was like when they were first <laughs> like confused. like when they first yes. opened it and it was like this is a vr horror experience and i'm just like, like the whole theater said pt 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 yeah like time. is this like a pt2 revival like what is this <laughs> we were and, thinking that the, and, the, phone, the, the phone yeah the phone and everything and i'm just like what is this and then it just kept going it kept going and then like this looked really cool and then like i should have known it was resident evil when you picked up the videotape and did that like flash thing of like you got this item <laughs> Like that's a very Resident oh, Evil thing. Oh yeah, like, that's a very Resident Evil thing. Um, but nope, but still didn't click with me. Picked up the videotape. They showed this weird, crazy imagery and stuff. That, like <laughs> makes it more into a trailer, and then they just back away, and then we see the like the headlight, and then we see the seven. And I was like, oh shit, oh, and then the seven. And then it made the evil like Resident Evil Biohazard, and I'm just like, oh shit, this is Resident Evil Seven. Like yeah. That was insane. Yeah, this like is, they brought it back to the roots. Yeah, this is like, well, I, this is another thing too. I mean, we'll see probably a little later, but like, is it really Resident Evil Seven, or that's just them saying this is kind of like the seventh entry because it looks like a reboot? Because it just—I mean, it's Resident Evil Seven. I mean, even though it has the subtitle Biohazard, and it's interesting because bio—that's what uh, Resident Evil is called in Japan, Biohazard. So. Um, but that's what makes me I think mean, kind of more like the reboot because it is like embracing the name of the original game two in japan um and i mean things isn't batshit crazy i mean not in the regular resident evil way so it might be more of a reboot because focusing more on the horror and stuff and then um because that's the thing though like because after we saw the demo they released like a trailer that shows a bit more of the game like other mm-hmm. parts like outside the house and they still didn't show any combat which got which got me a little concerned what if there is none? Yeah, it's got me a little concerned because yeah, what if it's what if they took too far of a step back and there's no combat and it's just something like Outlast? Uh, then you get PT. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> know how I feel about that. If people that. wanted that PT kind of game, then here you go. It's Resident Evil Four. I don't know how I feel about that though. A Resident Evil game, and then and then it's being marketed as Resident Evil Seven, so like the like a main entry, and there's just no combat, which would be really weird to me. Um, I mean, this is something obviously we're going to see later. Hell, the demo should be up tonight, so we'll see in the demo if they introduce. Are you going to play that demo? Probably uh, once it's available. Um, I will probably not tonight because I'm a coward. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, um, there's too much. You're going to play that Lego Star Wars demo though <laughs> tonight. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really interesting because we didn't see any combat or hints at combat in the in the demo or the like trailer they put out online since then. So, I mean, obviously, something we're going to see later. Maybe the demo might hint at it or show some of it. We'll see. Um, Because this game's coming out relatively soon. This is coming out in January. January 26th, I believe. Um, And the demo's available tonight, so we're going to be checking that out. Uh, But this got me really excited, though. I mean, it's just great to see Resident Evil go back to the horror roots and elements and just see this creepy environment, full atmosphere. And then what's got me really excited is that it's all VR. You can play the entire game in VR. No, which is great. Which is great because, yeah, this is a system seller for VR. I mean, this is big. Like, you can play a whole Resident Evil with the VR headset. You know, that's yeah. that's that's already, like, making this VR worth it right away. I mean, yep. grand, it's not available at launch, but it will be available, you know, two, three months later. Mm-hmm. And these are they're, these re-releases of 4, 5, and 6 are really helping to mm-hmm. remind people why they love Resident Evil, and especially with them ending well, this yeah, release four. with 4. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, they, four. Well, like some people... You're playing four right before some, seven. They'll be like, yes. I do know some people who actually like six, and even myself, I like five. And then they're going to end it off with four. So four is going to be the last taste you have in your mouth of Resident Evil. So you're already on an upswing. And then this comes out a couple months later. So I think it's a really smart move on them. Yeah, it I'm is. Looking up Resident Evil on the PlayStation Store right now, I don't see the demo. Mm, might um, be I. I I think it's slowly rolling out. I think on Twitter they just said that it was com- like it just came out in Japan and Europe. But I think they're doing it region by region, kind of slowly. But it's definitely supposed to be tonight. So refresh, <laughs> I guess. When did I get Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles? Was that like a PS Plus? Yeah, they gave both the light gun games away like years ago on PlayStation Plus. 
Really? Oh, so I guess that's why I have it. Mm-hmm. Was that a move game? Yep, I bought a move to play those games. I'm crazy. Shit. I might have to bust out the move. Bust <laughs> the move. I was just about to say. Good reference. <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah. I do have Resident Evil Four on the PS3, but th- that's trophies suck. Yeah, true. And um, and with yeah. Resident Evil Four, there's going to be a physical release, so you can go out and buy a physical copy of Resident Evil Four on PS4. Oh shit! Really? It's so going to be neat to have mm-hmm. on my on my shelf. Be like, look at that! It's Resident Evil Four in a physical box that says PS4. <laughs> Eh, I probably won't be needing that, but um, I don't. Yeah, Resident Evil Seven looks fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. Scary as all hell. I don't. I, I don't think I could do that. In VR is just too much. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm so glad it's coming yeah. back. So yeah, like I said, it's just it's just really exciting. I love that this is basically kind of like um, making me like yeah, like yes, got my VR. Like this is the game I would be like if I didn't already have the VR on pre-order. This is what I'd be getting the VR for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this mm-hmm. game, um, so it's really exciting. And then I love. I mean, we already. I mean, we already knew that Resident Evil was coming to E3, but like, I just it just did not click with me until that very end of that trailer. This was Resident Evil Seven. You know, and that was just a great surprise to me. Yeah, kind of like until I saw that logo. Yeah, kind of like with the PT thing. Everybody was like, "What is this?" And then, oh, it's Silent Hill. <laughs> They're doing like uh, the same thing, dude. Like having your demo out. Don't now. cancel it. <laughs> no. We're gonna well, follow. We're gonna follow in vain of PT right to the dot and cancel it too. <laughs> well, Capcom has no stock in Pachinko, so I think we're safe. Okay, <laughs> and Pachinko, <laughs> it'll be turned into a Pachinko machine. <laughs> oh my god! Oh boy! So yeah, but, so that's really exciting. Uh, but speaking of the VR, we got some updates on the VR itself, mm-hmm. uh, which they announced. Sony came on stage. That was like one of the few times some guy came on stage and really just sat there and talked about something. Some guy. Some guy. <laughs> CEO. The CEO. He's the CEO. It's your boy oh, Andrew so House. He... No, that wasn't Andrew House. That was Sean Layden. Oh yeah, you're right. Whoops. Yeah, he came on stage and said, "All right, yeah, you saw Resident Evil Seven. Looks cool. You're gonna be able to play it on VR from beginning to end." And speaking of VR, he said that the VR now has a release date of October thirteenth. Oh, thirteenth. Oh, Whoops. And guess what? October thirteenth is home to fifty other games. No. Oh wait, well, yeah, the launch games, but uh, for yes. VR, which they said they, they said there'd be fifty games between launch and like December or something like that for uh, VR. But no, October, what's on, th- huh? What's on October thirteenth? Yeah, it's on your birthday. Yes, that is my birthday. Oh, yeah, it's on your birthday. October thirteenth. So October thirteenth is my birthday. So you get nice. the VR so yes, the VR is coming out on my birthday, which is really cool. Uh, and it's funny because like I looked up on the calendar, October thirteenth is a Thursday, so it actually makes no sense that this is coming out on that day. I mean, it's hardware. I mean, it's, I hardware can come out any day it wants to. It, it, yeah, it could come out Sunday. Rules. Monday. Yeah, because we've seen Nintendo usually does their hardware on Sundays. Uh, Sony usually does theirs on Fridays. Uh, the Vita came out on a Wednesday. <laughs> um, and then they games had no hope when it came out. <laughs> Wednesday, the death day. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, Tuesdays is usually software, but I found it really weird that uh, PlayStation VR is coming out on Thursday. It just seems like a weird day to put it out on, but I don't care because that's my birthday. So I'm like, oh, Sony's putting out it on my birthday, so uh, I know what I'm doing that day. <laughs> Are you going to get all 50 launch? <laughs> get all the launch uh, games. With all those PSN cards you'll get? Dude. Yeah. I mean, October is going to be pretty packed. On yeah, top of the like, VR release, you already have The Last Guardian and Titanfall and Battlefield 1 and Mafia 3 and Gears comes out that month. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about a lack of Sony first-party games anymore. We're, I think we're okay. Yep. Considering that new hardware is coming out and then like with, with the PlayStation VR. Not new console hardware, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think so, this is already like a little much. So I was- <laughs> So I was really excited when I saw October 13th on the screen. I was like, oh, it's my birthday. I'm going to be playing VR on my birthday. And just, <laughs> it's going to be great. But um, also for VR, they're talking about some new content we're going to be getting, uh, including uh, we saw a little teaser trailer thing for Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing VR Mission. Developed, eh. developed by DICE and Criterion, the guys who did Burnout. Fair Burnout. Nice. I'll, I'll personally say I'm so, like, Criterion... <laughs> I, Burnout Paradise, one of my favorite games ever. Yes, so good. They're working. They're working on a I mean, VR mission, like not even a game, a mission. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you've been doing. A mission, yeah. Uh, well, no, they're working on that other game. 
that they showed at E3 like two years ago and we still haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, like I want to hear more about that before you go telling me you're involved with some add-on content to, to some other game. Uh, is that game that they're that is that other game they're working on still with EA? It's with EA, yeah, right? Yeah. It's still at EA. Gee, you would have thought that maybe would have been one of the few games that we would talk about on that conference. Exactly. Like, but what no, are you doing? a game that's hasn't been on the radar. But instead, we talk about yeah. games that won't come out for another five years, so it's okay, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, but I mean, it's still neat. I mean, it's it, it's gonna be. I mean, it says Star Wars Battlefront mission, so yeah, we're assuming this is DLC for Battlefront. And maybe not just a free thing you can download from the store. I don't know. We'll see. Um, mm. But it's still neat. I mean, you get to play in an X-Wing fighter and do this little mission. And I mean, hey, look, it's space battles in Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> so there, there's that. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah it, it, it'll be uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare to it. <laughs> and right. Space battles. Mm. And getting that, I mean, it's so. definitely it's definitely cool, especially for Star Wars fans. I'm just... Let let Criterion make a real game. No offense. <laughs> That's why yeah, I only because see. yeah, it is just a VR mission. But who knows? Like all these individual like small mission things can be eventually maybe expanded to a whole game. It's just like you know, they're, VR is such in the embryonic stage right now, where you know. That's what. See... <laughs> That's what Cry- Criterion clearly working on like a burnout Star Wars game. <laughs> where it's like burnout, but with Star Wars vehicles. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be spectacular! I'd play that. <laughs> Well, that's what EA said. Like, almost all their studios are working on Star Wars games. So why not make Criterion do a burnout Star just Wars des- game? Just destroy X-Wings? Yeah, just crash. No, no it's just pod racing. Pod racing. No, it's just pod racing. What are you guys talking about? I get to have my Watto. Yep. Oh, Criterion. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Ty- Criterion's rebooting the pod racer game. Oh, my God. I play that. This oh. is crash mode. Uh, yeah, that'd be, uh, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> And then, yeah, I'll, I'll be sh- I'll be so surprised if this ends up being real. Like next E3, we see this Criterion making this racing Star Wars game. <laughs> but um, yeah. But speaking of surprises at E3, this is probably one of the bigger surprises um, for me What's at least. Your favorite announcement of the night? No, this is not my favorite announcement of the night. Um, <laughs> this still isn't there yet. We're not there yet to my favorite announcement of the night. Um, but this was probably one of the bigger surprises of the night. I mean, there was a lot of them tonight, but this is a big surprise. So they announced that that Rocksteady is developing a Batman Arkham VR experience. <clears throat> now, what the hell does that mean? We have no <laughs> idea. Don't know. I mean, we don't know. Cause, I mean, cause, yeah. Because when the teaser came up, I heard you hear you hear the Joker, you hear Mark Hamill in the Joker line. I'm like, okay. And we see Batman. I thought I thought this was Injustice too. No, that's I did it first. I did it that's first. That's why I thought so it the was. that I was talking about with the VR stuff, I didn't think why would it be injustice? I just but, like, thought announced I, VR support for it. Yeah, like I thought it was injustice because <laughs> that's the only Batman thing coming up, right? Is injustice? Yeah, too. but I was all like, no, this and is like a Batman VR. I was thinking maybe the new Telltale Batman game. Oh yeah, the Telltale like, Batman game. Mark Hamill, because yeah, yeah, Mark Hamill's not in that game. That's so I, oh no, I was I was like, dude, with all the other games that were showing up the stage, I don't think a Telltale game has any right to be like prominently shown on a PlayStation press conference, like, showing, like... Even though we had Lego yes. Star Wars have its trailer, um, just, like, I think in comparison to everything else, like, a Telltale Yeah, game. but that's so, what I was thinking, though. Like, at first, I was like, this is Injustice 2. Then uh, halfway through, I was like, yeah, maybe this is, the tel- this is the Telltale game. But then, no, it was, like, Rocksteady, developing, like, one word at a time, developing a VR experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, coming October. <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> I was like, what? Like, it was blowing my mind because, like, I just couldn't believe that Rocksteady is actually developing this new Arkham game thing. And, like, it's. And then, and then we have no idea what it is. It just says Arkham ex- VR experience. I don't know what the hell that even means. Like, See, is it. I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm so. You're interested. Batman, dude. You are the Batman. As much as Rocksteady Batman. wanted you to be the Batman, you are the Batman. Yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine that's going to be a first person type thing. That has to be, <laughs> like,. It yeah, better not. Be. Well, we'll get to it later, but it better not be the Final Fantasy 15 type of design where yeah, it's in first make person, it first person. And you, like, you like look and it doesn't the, work. You, no, you're in first person. You look at like the gargoyle ledges and you just shoot to it, and then you look down and then you <laughs> yeah. like grapple down the enemies, and then you go to another ledge and then grapple down first person. The that does they not walk by. sound fun. That does not sound fun that at all. Fun. So, <laughs> at least keep it in third person. Just keep it in third person because Batman's proven to work like that. Unless you think it's something really innovative and 
true to the Batman gameplay you've already established in first person, then by all means do it. But you can you can do a VR experience in third person and just have that access act as a camera. Yeah. Like you can do that. It's kind of funny though now thinking about it is like Arkham Knight was not the final Batman for anybody involved, even though they said it was. Like Mark nope. Hamill, well, Mark Hamill was like, "Ah, I'm done with the Joker after Arkham Knight." And guess what? He's back for this. He's back for Killing Joke. He's back for that new animated Batman series coming to Cartoon Network. Uh, Rocksteady said they were done, and now they're doing this. So it's kind of like this, a, this might very well be DLC. They didn't say it wasn't. Yeah, they didn't say it wasn't. So we'll see. But it's coming in October, so it's launching with the VR, um, presumably. I mean, my, I don't know. They, I don't know if they'd be like, "Oh no, we're going to release it on October twentieth, one week later, or something." But it's really interesting. I mean, we got to get some kind of update on this soon if it really is coming in October and launching with the VR. Kind of see what it is, and and like I said, I was really surprised by. It. I just didn't see this coming, like a you know Arkham Knight type thing with VR. You know. Yep. Yep. Really exciting stuff. Very. Um, let's see. What did they follow that up with? And then they follow that up with uh, probably oh, as exciting as this was. It's probably still my second favorite announcement of the night. Second hmm. favorite announcement. This is probably still oh, my, my second goodness. favorite. You're announcement. really ranking these announcements. Well, I'm just saying this is probably my as 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 exciting as. Don't get me wrong. I was excited as hell for this, but it's still probably my second favorite announcement of the night. But they came. But they came on stage and said that they are working with Activision. To Sony's working with Activision to remaster and remake the original three Crash Bandicoot games. That is very exciting. Yes. If you think about it in terms of the Ratchet and Clank reboot that came out a couple months back, yes, that has the potential to be out, ma- out amazing, God, just outstanding, playing, just, or amazing. Just, God, just playing Oriental Express again on warped in HD, riding the tiger on the Great Wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that would be cool it makes me tear that, oh the tiger yeah when you ride the tiger just like oh playing that level again in hd yeah the music and everything and then you play then oh and then play the boss fight with uh with, with when you're in the like the little spaceship shooting the giant mech suit yeah in hd oh my god <sighs> oh, see god. it's kind of it is kind of disappointing where they made that big announcement and everyone freaked out and then they're like, but we that's far off, so we have no footage. So here's some Skylanders DLC. Yeah, you're getting you're getting crashed this year as a Skylanders character. Um there there has been updates since then. I, I saw um they confirmed that all three games will be together in a collection game. So it's gonna be like the crash collection nice. and it'll have all three in there and it'll re- be released in twenty seventeen, so it will be next year. Crash Lection with crash the Lection. Sly Cooper five demo. Um, but yeah, this is just so <laughs> exciting. Like I said, it's it's gonna be weird. It's like I'm actually going to be really tempted to just skip to warp. You know, I just <laughs> want to play warp so bad. And like I don't even because like that's the thing. Like we talked about this before. Like Crash Bandicoot one really wasn't that great because it's weird. It's not like the other two because it's kind of like their tech demo. Their basically. first try. Their first try. Yeah. Their tech demo of like what we kind of want Crash to be, and then they hit their starter with two, and then they hit perfection with three. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it, the first night on games are always the weird ones, even though, you know, uh, Jack and Dexter were totally diff- radically different for two and three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's exciting that, uh, Ratchet, uh, oh my gosh, Ratchet, now you got me saying Ratchet and Clay. <laughs> Crash is back. That, yeah, Crash I'm, is back. That's great. Been teased well, for so long. Yep. Well, I think I, I don't I think mean, it was ever. Keep dangerous. in mind, this isn't new. Yes, it's built from the ground up. A remake, yeah. Well, a remaster of one. I mean, it didn't say remake. A remaster of one, two, and three. Yeah. So, guess what, guys, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna have to buy the hell out of this game if you're gonna want Activision to even think. Yep. Oh, I, I agree. Even starting to make another like. I don't want like another a, one. I just want this. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it would be great to I've get something. I've seen Activision make Crash yeah. Bandicoot games. I don't want those. <laughs> yeah, but granted, I know this, I know this remaster is being made by Activision in 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 partnership with Sony, but still, they're they're basing it on a very strong foundation. I don't think they can screw that up, especially if Sony is helping out. Yeah, that too. So. You, you, so, boys and girls, if you want a new, like a brand new Crash game. I mean, as great as we're getting these three other ones, but I already know how great those three are because I played them. So and it'll be great to get them in HD with trophies. That's going to be fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But a brand new Crash game, 
people are going to need to go buy this to even get active. Oh, I'm going to buy it. I'm yeah, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I'm too. not buying it in the hopes of getting a new one, though. I'm just buying it because I want to play these damn games. I mean, do you guys not think that they might pull, like, in the Sly collection? Where they, if you platinum all three games, they just gave you a trailer for Sly Four. You don't think they try and pull something like that? I don't know. It's Activision. I, I mean, like, I don't, I don't even think they service. have a. I don't even think they even have like a brand a brand new one. Even because it's funny because like it's funny seeing this announcement too because it wasn't even that Sony like got the rights back. It was just no, we're working with Activision to get this Shh. happening. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like it's so funny because it's just it's just weird because it's like Activision didn't do anything with Crash for the longest time, and Sony probably approached them and said, "Hey, can we just buy them back from you?" And Activision was just like, "Oh, you want this, don't you?" <laughs> you know, like, like they're the emperor, <laughs> they're the emperor from Star Wars. <laughs> Girl, I know you want this Crash. You because know, and it's like, oh, we weren't like, going to, we, were, we weren't going to do anything with Crash, but since you want him now, let's uh, let's work something out. We're not going to sell him to you. We're going to develop a game <laughs> so we can have the money <laughs> yeah. from the sold copies. So lucrative, but um, God, what was I going to say? Train of thought, lost. No, um, no, nah, just people that. I mean, the Skyliner thing didn't do anything for me. Um. No. I mean, I'm tempted to like at least just buy the figure to have it up, but like, yeah. You know, One guy you know. clapped for it in the theater, and I gave him a high five for caring. No, that collection <laughs> those got me, man. I want that collection. Yeah, that collection it definitely has me excited. I'm trying to look at Naughty Dog to see if they said anything about it, but no, they haven't really said anything about it. I guess. Yeah. They they moved past Crash, in case you haven't noticed. They can't um, even put no. Uncharted. No, they didn't. <laughs> um, they they Crash was very prominent in Uncharted Four, if you didn't know. Oh yeah, that too. So they did not move on from Crash. It's still there in their memory. It's still there in their memory and DNA. In the um, most grounded way possible. Yeah. Very meta. All the knows. Um, but anyway, oh, I actually skipped one. Because I'm trying to, I'm, we're trying, trying to go over these in order. Oh. I, skipped, I skipped one, but we kind of already mentioned it. But before they actually did the Crash thing, uh, they showed off the first. Gameplay demo thing of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Yes, God, Call of Duty Infinite. Oh yeah, which was crazy. Um, yeah, that it, it looks pretty crazy. It looked like Mass Effect at first. You know, like the way they're like, oh, looking through the map and looking at the planets, mm-hmm. and they click a planet, look at that, yeah. planet facts and details and info, and like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's go here, and it's like, all right, and you hop in your ship, and you got like take off and count very avatar-esque where you're yeah, like shooting yeah shooting off into space and then you get like you go into these space dog fights and then you hop off your spaceship and you fight on top of a ship and it's all zero gravity and then you bust into the ship i'm like this is insane yeah it's not it's not it, no loading times by the way yeah uh, and it, it's all seamless and it, it makes me wonder like how open is this like can you just fly anywhere in the galaxy or can you only fly to this one spot oh, i mean knowing I mean, that's call it knowing that's call of duty I mean, yes, it'll probably be a little bit more open than previous CODs, but no, like parts of it's still like it's still gonna be a Call of Duty campaign through and through where it's gonna be, yeah, you're you get to this like one particular section and you're able to do whatever. You're able to go back and fly off, but I don't think it's full on it's not no no man's sky. But I, yeah. <laughs> I don't call no it. man's call of duty. No man's <laughs> call of duty. I really uh, quick just wanna call out the fact that everyone Everyone was shitting on this game as soon as it was announced. Like, yeah. sure, sure, it's the not the box art the... changed. By the way, the box art. Oh yeah, has the box art it's the actually. First time for a cod to change yeah. the box art. I mean, if you look at the di- the different box arts, they clearly changed it to show a little bit less of that space. Mm, they sci-fi did that one, or but tricking people. Yeah, but I do think this game <laughs> looks just, really cool. The box like, art would just be the uh, Modern Warfare remaster and a small print <laughs> Infinity War. <laughs> Infinite Warfare included. Also includes. <laughs> also oh included Infinite Warfare. Well, the- I mean, I was talking about this like the other week. That it was kind of like a Final Fantasy Type Zero, where it was like people wanted the Final Fantasy Fifteen demo instead of <laughs> Final Fantasy Type Zero. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah. no, like all that criticism aside, like no, I found this demo to be very impressive. Like I was actually fairly impressed with this. Uh, Demo and especially like how far Infinity Ward has, had came since you know the launch of the PS4 with Ghosts and all the stuff that they learned from that. And uh, I'm very interested, of course, it's gonna be a day one buy. And I want to go get uh, Call of Duty 4. They had a trailer for that again, which I don't think it was the same, it was a little bit different. Now, uh, it, yeah, I, I mean, well, I don't know, did you want to say something, Emmett? Uh, real quick, I was just gonna say it's kind of 
like we're coming to a point where the, mm-hmm. the guys who went to go and make respawn over at EA, they were Call of Duty guys originally, they were, and yes. now and now you got this new game with it from Infinity Ward and the Titanfall Two from Respawn. They look really, really similar. <laughs> like when, the grapple hook when you're grappling yes, some people. Because when he shot that grapple hook out at an enemy for the first time, me and my friend that I went with, we both said at the same time, Titanfall, Titanfall 2. 2. It's like Titanfall 2. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but <laughs> definitely looks similar. Yeah, because, I mean, that's the thing about this Call of Duty like, that no one can complain about this year is that this is different. Like, this isn't – people can't say it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, look at how the way that single player was going. It's single player, not co-op. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, take a look at that campaign. It's definitely different from other CODs, even though uh, when you get down to the base of it, it'll still be a Call of Duty campaign. But, yeah, the way he was exploring all those plans and stuff was so interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different. I mean, granted, maybe maybe they should have tried to come up with a different way to be different. But because this does awesome. seem like because yeah. this seems really far out there for them to kind of go in this huge bold direction of just being like, well, that's what they wanted to do. I mean, space epic, you know? Yeah, I mean, yep. and it, it's just Ever- at this point, it just feels like a new IP at this point. Like maybe we they should just call it Infinite Warfare or something instead of Call of Duty, but they've already passed that. They yeah. passed that opportunity a long time ago. Oh, you gotta have the Call of Duty IP in there, yeah, uh, yeah. because you know that has so much um, brand value. Uh, marquee value no i mean the, something like this way out there i i envision infinity ward to do something like this because just ha- the way that ghost in modern warfare 3 turned out to just not work out and you know i was like man like this new team infinity ward like i know they can do a lot better than this and hopefully this will pan out um and the multiplayer uh, let's not forget the multiplayer something that definitely lasts longer than the single player i can't hopefully wait that, zero g multiplayer uh, yeah, if that's a thing, you know, I hope uh, multiplayer reveal soon will um, hopefully qualm some of the fears um, that people might have. Because, you know, that that will give the game its legs and longevity. So that's just as important. Mm-hmm. Even though I haven't been and, into a Call of Duty uh, multiplayer for a while. So that's important. Mm-hmm. And um, also a small thing, too, they kind of announced, too. It was briefly shown in, like, elaborate on it. But it's also been announced that if you pre-purchase the special edition of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare on PS4, you get early access to the Ma- Modern Warfare Remastered campaign. You get, yes. Oh, you get it 30 days I didn't early. even know that. Yes. Oh, that's a lot. I'm getting that. Holy hell. But yeah, it, says, <laughs> it says pre-purchase. I'm assuming this is the digital version. Like, if you digitally get it on PS4. Ah. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, digitally yeah, pre- just... yeah, if you digitally pre-order it on PS4, then 30 days before the game even launches, you'll, they'll give you access to download the single-player campaign of uh, Modern Warfare Remastered. Well, That's what do you know, man? Because uh, I remember we talked about, like, a few weeks ago at this point, like, when I was saying, like, the Xbox listing or whatever, I was like, oh, you might be able to get, like, Call of Duty Remastered early, but... This is like part of it, at least. You get the campaign early. Yeah, you get the campaign early. Yeah, you get the campaign early. So that's, that's part that a lot of guess. people want any- anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, but it's not, it doesn't include the multiplayer. So it's, yeah, it, it, I mean, it doesn't include the multiplayer for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, what you really want. But no, I, I'm, I'm still willing to bet, like, when push comes to shove day one, like, of course, more people are going to be playing the base Infinite Warfare game than Call of Duty 4 because, I mean, it's in a different skew. You have to pay more for it, and you know more people. I think it just generally, since it is the hot new game, Infinite Warfare, that more people will be playing that than Call of Duty Four Remastered. As many people will say, like, "Oh, I'll ditch Infinite Warfare and just play uh, COD Four Remastered." So hmm. um, that's not going to be the case. I mean, as great as COD Four Remastered is going to be, and I'm definitely going to play the hell out of that, but. Um, Infinite Warfare is a hot new thing. I mean, you're going to want to play the hot new game. Very rarely does remasters or um, really outperform, you know, hot new games. I mean, Resident Evil did really well. Oh, sorry. You, just, you said the word hot too much. You, might, you, you sound like Zoolander or something. Hot, hot. <laughs> it is very hot in here. But um, yeah, I mean, it's neat. We're going to see. Uh, like I said, the bold new direction. But. Um, yeah, but speaking of bold titles, the follow oh the the thing they announced. Uh, well, they did call it, didn't they? Crash, but after Crash, Sony uh, brought on stage 
the man, the legend. <laughs> he oh, they gave him, him a, they gave him a grand yeah, entrance. Yeah, like he came on yes. like a rock star, man. They, like, but they like, gave him like a staircase he, that lit up off beat to his footsteps. But <laughs> he, he was walking he was a little too fast. fast. Yeah, he was yeah, walking, walking slightly fast. fast. I was like, Kojima, enjoy the moment. <laughs> no, he's faster <laughs> but, than the speed of light. <laughs> like, I don't, I didn't get that. I was like, why is he going so fast? Like, I was like. The just bask in the moment. Thousands but I mean, of it was just funny because this is a huge stage, a huge stage, a huge curtain. They pull back and just that one man standing there yeah. in the light <laughs> with his logo Holy there Kojima. coming down. Everybody's like shouting his name like, yeah, Kojima, Kojima. And, like everybody's chanting his name, come down the steps. And his words are just, oh, hey, I'm back. <laughs> you know, and it's like it's just so great and epic, and he's just he's, all like, "I'm back, I'm back." <laughs> See, I totally thought that that was literally all we were gonna get from him. Just come oh. back, I'm back. Mission statement for the studio and leave. But this man brought brings a trailer footage. I didn't even expect the footage. No, no. if they would, yeah. if you had been walking down the steps and they're playing that YouTube song, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Then you would know he has nothing to show yet. <laughs> But um, no, because let's not forget, guys. Kojima was looking. Well, I think was he was looking for new technology. New technology. He was searching all over the world. His world tour of all the studios. He was searching for new technology. Yeah, him and Mark Cerny hand in hand. Mm -hmm. They were touring the world for new technology, which I just found to be the most hilarious thing in the world. Because I was like looking at his Twitter like thing for like two weeks, and he was like still searching for new technology. I found this thing. But I guess he found iPhone. that new technology, because let's talk about this technology yes. that he's got for. Yes, he came on stage, said, hey, I got this thing I want to show you guys, check it out, and then it played this weird, just insane <laughs> trailer. It's just Kojima. Like, it's Kojima. A very Kojima trailer, just <laughs> slowly building, like you see these dead crabs, like you see Sony Entertainment Presents. Uh, Kojima Productions production. <laughs> just like, keep going. And you see some dude on the beach, and you're like, who the, what the hell's going on here? Handprints everywhere. And then, like, he creeps up, and you see a baby, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Pan reveal. Bam. Norman Reedus is back in the Kojima game. But they oh, my God. Yeah. And then I was thinking for a second, like, is this going to be, like, PT, like not like 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 we always said, like the hypothetical revival of PT, where it's not called like Silent Hills. It's the same PT game. And A. Yeah, but like it would basically, <laughs> well, it basically be like PT, or it would be Silent Hills, but it just wouldn't be called Silent Hills. You know, like we well, I mean, about, yeah. like, but I mean, it's already been stated that Kojima's next game, and it's not even horror. So yeah, but but that was the thing. Like I was just wondering, if that's what this be because we saw Norman Reedus, and we we're like, okay, is this some revival PT? Because I was so I was expecting the title to be something with a P and a T, like the initials of the game would be PT, you know, mm. like just to show this was a revival of PT, but no, it just kept going. And we see more crazy art and stuff of dead whales and, uh, the baby disappearing. And then these floating things in the sky, it's insane. And then we finally get, uh, I love the way it's set up to like a movie where it says, uh, a Hemo Kojima production starring Norman Reedus in, uh, death stranding. And then it cuts to black, yep. and then we get the logo, and we get like the small print, like a movie, you know, like a movie does at the end, mm -hmm. like the credits uh, underneath the title. And this is just crazy. I mean, granted, we probably won't be playing this game for a very long time. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Now we're going to be hearing about this rambling for a while, but <sighs> they could have saved this for next year, but. Get, I'm fine. I'm fine with it because I guess because it was great that Kojima was in team where able to put this together. Um, because you know we heard like funny new stories where like Kojima all he had was like the logo or whatnot. Sony just bought you know just based yeah. on him. It'd be so, great right? if like yeah, it'd be great if Kojima came on stage like he just walked down the steps and he pulls that t-shirt gun. That's all he's there for to shoot the t-shirts out. Have a t-shirt gun. Yeah. Like hey, you guys get a t-shirt, just shooting it out, and that's it. You don't have nothing else. Like oh, there's my t-shirt and my logo. That's it. Because like, <laughs> you, guys you know, sure. coming off hot, hot okay. uh, off the heels of Metal Gear Solid Five, which came out in September. It's been a while. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, but I, you know, after that, and then the whole Konami fiasco is just. You know, I found it a little too soon to be announcing another game, but yeah, yeah but he's really trying to. Be... But you can see, he's still really trying to stick it to um, Konami, like you yeah, know, that's yeah, being that, there that. saying this is my game, my production, 
Here's Norman Reedus again. Reaffirm, yeah, Norman Reedus again, that they are collaborating because, you know, there are Twitter pictures all the time. Like, oh, Norman Reedus and Kojima back together. What could yeah, this like, mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, he yeah. really wants to work with Norman Reedus. He's like, I'm not letting him go. He's not going to ruin my <laughs> dream of working with Norman Reedus. You got an AMC show? Psych, get in my game. Well, and then Norman Reedus wanted to equally as work with Kojima as well. Like, he seemed excited yeah. as well. So, so and, and, and to be in the video game. Well, in a legit video game, <laughs> and then like, and then like everybody was like already putting up videos and things like analysis, like the like with the symbolism already in the trailer, like right. yeah, like oh, no, oh yeah. And, then, and then Kojima Productions uploaded like the entire logo, like what it is, mm-hmm. but like the symbolism, like oh look, Norman Reedus is wearing a dog tag with five tags on it, five Metal Gear Solid games, that's the past, and then looking upon the future, and there's Good five God. more pillars, and it's like what's going on, you know. Yeah, I'm just like very curious. Like, what is this game? There's always a lighthouse. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just like, it's like, man, I'm a little through. confused. Like, what is it? Like, man, well, it's a third person game. Yes. Well, I don't think we know anything about the game. I think he's just setting up all the weird Kojima isms within <laughs> the universe, and then give it like a year or two and then he'll come back at another conference with gameplay he's gonna come back in a year and then show the same trailer and like point out something that no one noticed in the past year and it's so obvious like look the answer was right there and he like pauses and does like a circle with a pin or something he does that like look you see you missed it you dummies my god the release date was right here right if you zoom in on norman (laughs) reedus's butt crack (laughs) it says 20 2019 it clearly says 2019 <laughs> game, but then it oh, says but then it says 2019 and it's scratched out. It says 2020 because of delay. Um. <laughs> yeah, you know what the scary part is? This game isn't probably till 2020. Because <laughs> yeah. knowing Kojima and just like the way that it works and everything, I mean, look how long it took for the core Metal Gears to come out. Yeah, this game is so far. <laughs> so far away i know it's a little sad to We're think about see it. it again for a while no mm-mm. not like, it's okay. if we'll even see it we'll be lucky to even see more of it this year i mean if they were able to put this together that's great but like <sighs> we have plenty and plenty and plenty of yeah, other plenty studios to hear from yeah, like yeah exactly, sucker, but... sucker punch wasn't even here so like oh. we got plenty of people but uh yeah it's just a little I'm just I as great as that was I, at the same time I was just like ah, this is like gonna be out for a long time but I guess in the meantime I should actually go out and beat Metal Gear Solid Five then yeah I'm almost done with it I'm getting there it's a long ass game. it is a long ass game but I'm getting there I'm almost done almost getting there seeing the light the end, seeing the light in the tunnel <laughs> the long long tunnel but yeah with that out of the way we we're finally getting to. Oddly enough, well, other than the Days Gone demo, this is actually the last announcement from Sony of the night, and this is actually my favorite announcement of the whole night. Big uh, one. My favorite announcement of the whole night, my game of the show. <laughs> um, Yeah, this is probably my game of the show. Yeah, favorite announcement, hmm. game of the show. Blew my mind. I lost my shit seeing this running. Blew my and? goddamn mind. I, just, I couldn't believe this. So we see, we see... We hear the voiceover. We see some New York landscape, and we're like, da 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 da, da da da. We're like, wait, what? We're like, wait, what? What is this? What? We saw and that Insomniac logo. And then we see that Insomniac logo, and then I'm really I starting. Did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. The Insomniac logo. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? 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 <laughs> then the Marvel logo came up, and I'm like, oh sh. And then there it was Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man <laughs> is coming to PS4. Couldn't believe it. A new Spider Man game is in development. Buy Insomniac Not- Games exclusively for PS4. Exclusive. Exclusive for PS4. I would never have guessed that to happen. You know, to see a big IP like Spider-Man get an exclusive game for PS4. Let alone Insomniac. From Insomniac. When, for a while, it was being rumored from Sucker Punch. Yeah, Sucker Punch was the rumored one, but it turned out to be Insomniac, yeah. which isn't even a Sony-owned studio, and yet they're still developing it exclusively for <laughs> PS4. Well, Ratchet and Clank turned out very well for them. Yeah. But there was like a split second where I was kind of bummed that it was Insomniac rather than Sucker Punch. But then I thought Sucker Punch is good superhero stuff. But Insomniac knows how to do a lighthearted superhero s story. They know how to do that to a T, and they got the gameplay down from the Ratchet games. So I trust them implicitly. Yeah, and they did Sunset Overdrive too. Like they can incorporate a lot of that too, like the movement, oh yeah, and traversing and stuff. 
because God, it looks so good too in motion. That trailer, just seeing Spider Man, the way he moves, the way he web swings, the way he was like, you saw when he was like flipping through that, like in the building, like over the over the tables and stuff. Oh yes, that was amazing. I was like, oh crap! And then like he goes through the window and then fighting, and then he has this like really weird suit. Like it's really unique. Like we haven't seen a suit like this before. Like the like weird, a big white spider. Yeah, a big white spider on it. You know that was kind of odd, but whatever. Um, and then we saw the Dog, eyes. So many forms of Spider Man. So many forms. It's like this is another one to add to the list of just yep. Spider Man costumes. But then the, we saw the eyes move like it does in Civil War. Mm-hmm. The way the eyes like uh, flexing like a lens. Like I, I was just floored by this. I just did not see this coming at all, and it blew my mind. And like, I'm so excited for this game. It um, almost makes me forgive them for canceling the Resistance series. Yeah, and it's just like because, like I said, this is this is my favorite announcement of the show. This is like my game of the show, this Spider-Man game, because it's just because I mean, this is what we've been talking about. We've talked about it for so long that Marvel hasn't really done anything like in the AAA game market in a while. You know, yeah, and DC's been doing it with Batman for the past couple of years. You know, but Marvel's never really got back at it yet. And this is big. I mean, yeah, we've already had good Spider-Man games, but this is a chance for like uh, to come back for a really great Spider-Man game because it's from Insomniac. This is such a good studio. This is like a big name studio tackling this property. You know, mm-hmm. and even though Insomniac has had some faults over the years, but I mean, no, they're back on track, and yeah, looks so good. Watching the trailer again, actually. <laughs> they keep watching it over and over. Again, no release date, not even a title. <laughs> we don't even know what it's called. We just know that right now it's just Spider Man PS4. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for this game. And it'll probably be out. It'll probably be out. Here's the weird part. Too. It's probably, I hope. Yeah, this is. The I mean, movie. We saw, we saw, yeah, that's, that's the weird part. This is actually probably going to be the best movie tie in game ever. I mean, it's not going to adapt <laughs> the story of the, of the movie. It said it will be its own story, but it'll probably still be released along with the movie. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely. It probably will, or the or the DVD release of the movie, or the DVD release. But they already said this is an original. Because story. The yeah, I mean, they already said this is an original story. It's not going to tie in with the new movie next year. Um, it will be its own original story and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll still probably be released probably around the time of the movie just to get in on that. Um, I like I like I, this Q and A the article Marvel has. Why Spider Man? Why Insomniac? Why PlayStation? <laughs> why <laughs> Does it why, work? why life? It makes too much. Why am sense. I living? Yeah, because I'm already seeing people freak out online about it being a PS4 exclusive. Like people are not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, get a PS4 now. Yeah, go get your PS4. Like if I didn't have a PS4, <laughs> I would go out and buy a PS4 for this. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's how big a deal this is, man. This is just oh, it's kind of so exciting. Well, actually, the also a thing of note here from the Marvel website is that. We hope you enjoyed your first look at Spider-Man. We invite you to keep watching the skies for more surprises from Marvel games in the months to come. Is he going to just rain copies of this game down on us? (laughs) Oh, the skies? Hmm. Yeah, from the skies. Just like, there you go. Free. It's free for everyone. Um, I don't know. Well, Comic-Con's in, what, next month? So we might get another little update on it next month then. Maybe. Maybe. uh, New York Comic-Con? New York Comic-Con. Yeah, New New York. York. New York, yeah. I might be going to New York Comic Con this year, so maybe I might be able to go to a panel yeah, one too. Yeah, go to that Spider Man panel, man. Ooh, that would probably be a big one. Yeah, that would probably like be one of the bigger ones. So, like, dang, I would have to wait a long time in line for that one. But I mean, if this shows some like new gameplay, that might be worth it. I mean, just <laughs> so excited for this, and then hopefully this will lead to other Marvel properties. You know getting a uh, big game treatment by other developers too, you know, like outside of Insomniac, like, you know, even sucker punch, you never know. Even sucker punch. Oh God, get a Wolverine game developed by Sony St. Monica. Shit. <laughs> oh my God. Don't, don't start with me. Don't start with me. I can't take this. You can't I, take I, that. I almost had a heart attack two hours ago. I'm not about to have another. Oh one God. After. That'd be Sony's mic drop next year too. Like, Oh, you love that Spider-Man announcement. Guess what? Sony Santa Monica's doing a Wolverine game. Oh dude. Origins two from the Santa Monica team. Oh my God. Like, Cause you know, Raven. Was terrible. The game was pretty good. Yeah, it was. Jeez. But, but yeah, get get the God of war developers on a, on a Wolverine game and see what happens. Oh my God. I can only imagine. Dude, that was just so good. Yeah, this trailer was fantastic. Uh, couldn't have imagined it any better. Very surprising that Insomniac Games is still making Sony exclusive games. But, I mean, not too much of a surprise because Ratchet & Clank, the game, 
uh, turned out very successful on PlayStation Four. So, oh, I hope I hope I hope Insomniac is not like some weird reverse curse where like they made the Ratchet Clank game movie thing and like the game was better than the movie. So I don't want them to make the Spider Man game and it ends up being better than the movie. No, yeah. I can't. But I mean, that. They're, they're they're two very separate entities, even though they're not really based on each other. Because you know, you had that Ratchet and Clank situation where you know they're based off of each other and they're supposed to kind of just speak to each other in terms of just audience perception. So, uh, and then only one lost ten million dollars. Exactly right. So, with Spider Man, you know, you either can come out, you know, around the movie, or you know, it could come out near the DVD or Blu-ray release of the movie. So. Because Spider Man is coming out like in the summer of 2017, uh, so oh man, it's so exciting! I'm like this, this kind of game, yeah. PlayStation needs in its portfolio not something post apocalyptic or you know something very dour and very violent. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm down for that. Yeah, because you know PlayStation needs a game like this. You know, we see like Days Gone, we see God of War, we see yeah. uh, all the, and then we see Kojima's game, which is very abstract and very kind of depressing, and then. It's just nice to see something a little bit more lighter yeah. instead a of wide breadth of content from the PlayStation. Yeah, which platform. is good. Yeah, especially you know because since Dreams wasn't shown off or you know any of the other abstract Sony um, games, mm-hmm. so it's it's refreshing actually to see Sony actually get some a game like this um, because Microsoft has already had similar not not similar because you know Spider Man is so different, but they, uh, Microsoft has had some some lighter games as well. But uh, Spider Man is definitely one that uh, mm-hmm. PlayStation will have in spades and can't wait. It's going to mm-hmm. be fantastic. It's going to yes. be good. That was the one we don't, where we don't even have to worry mm-hmm. about it even being good. That's the fantastic part. So, like, I don't even have to worry about it. So, I just have to. All I'm worried about is just hopefully this gets in my hands soon. Within, <laughs> within the next year, I hope. But I'm a little wishful, but we'll see, considering that there was no date, there was no time frame. Like no I said, I'm, of- I'm willing to bet that this will be. Probably summer 2017, 2017. Yeah. with the with the summer movie. Because mm-hmm. like I said, like the only things that won't hit next year is definitely Kojima's game. No, uh, for sure. Um, the Crash remasters I see coming out next year. Yeah, they're slated for next year. They said uh, for 2017. Slated for next year. Um, Days Gone, I see next year. So yeah, I mean, it looks, isn't it, I mean, we see a good. We saw a good chunk of it, so it's probably. Well, it looks far it. along. Yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I consider it about years it was in development. Yeah. Uh, God of War, I see next year. Yeah. Again, uh, what else was there? I don't know why I'm forgetting. These games horizons yeah. next year for sure. It's, it's got a locked date, hopefully. Detroit's um, next year. Detroit's hopefully next year. Next year. I don't they, know. They haven't, they, it. they haven't said it. They never said the word Vita in the entire conference. Nope. No Vita. I just pointed that out real quick. The CEO has the parody account was saying that uh, of CEO Casarai was saying like that orchestra was going to play the Vita's uh, best song. <laughs> oh yeah, the funeral song, the menu music. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> That'd be great. But um, what else was there? I mean, that was about it. Yeah, that was everything. That was all the big highlights. I mean, I will I will call out uh, the really idiotic Final Fantasy fifteen VR oh, demo that's right. stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. Stuck yeah, I mean, it's just there. It's an extra thing to mess around with. It's not like you're gonna play the whole game like that. Sure, yeah. but man, that that just seemed, it looked like a parody by the end of it. I was like, is this even real? <laughs> like the character had a VR headset in the game. Like, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, and I found like it's it's even Microsoft showing was very lackluster like the section of the game that the shows so actually unfortunately i don't know this e3 showing of final fantasy 15 kind of got me less excited about it a little bit but i mean i'll still pick it up it comes out around the time of my birthday so i'll probably pick it up yeah i'm excited for final fantasy 15 and i'm sure i'll be able to play all the way through it and i'll just buy it for the hype like i did 13 but <laughs> i'm excited for final fantasy 15 graphically it looks great and Everything so, and plus, you know, the whole story behind the game. But I want to just play it, and it looks great. Yeah. Um, we shall so, see. got a fill on my JRPG void. Yes, want to bring over Nino Kuni to PS4, but whatever. Yeah, but mm-hmm. with that, uh, we're already an hour and 38 minutes in. Um, boy, howdy! Yeah, so I mean, 
But yeah, we talked about everything though. The big ones, the big highlights. So exciting. This was a great conference. It was just it was amazing because like everything they showed was exciting and awesome. You know, it, they didn't even like there was not even like an indie showcase this year. Nope. Just the games and just, just the big games. Just the big games. I mean, the only the only like small thing they showed was like Farpoint that VR game. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, remember Farpoint? That's true. Yeah, Farpoint was kind of like tucked in there. Like, oh yeah, Farpoint. This is a VR game. Okay, Farpoint. <laughs> Farpoint. Okay, and then like after that, it was like oh triple A game. <laughs> like following it up and just like you kind of forget about it by the end because you're just being bombarded with all these big triple A games and just this excitement. It's crazy. Annihilated. Yeah, and then and then of course the Lego Star Wars bit just kind of like hey, it's coming out in two weeks. You can play the demo today, tonight. Yeah, the Lego Star Wars one was a little strange. I was like, I'm like, this game's coming out next, this month, the end of this month. So I'm like, eh. But, yeah. you know, like Star Wars and PlayStation have a good relationship. Yeah. It's and, still uh, funny to see it, to the, see the, the clips from, from there. Spoiling the movie, by the way, if you haven't seen Episode 7. Oh, I mean, come on. There sh- yeah, if you oh, yeah, I already seen, know. If you somehow I, never seen Episode 7 yet. Every human being I've, has seen Honestly, it. I hadn't seen Episode 7, but the internet spoiled it for me long, long ago. So. Oh, well, you have spoiled again seeing like Ben put uh, Phasma in the trash can. <laughs> I can and live that he it. works in sanitation. Sanitation. But, yeah. But, anyway, it was a great... Great E3. This is this is what we this is what E3 is all about. What we saw tonight, all these big announcements, surprises, getting us hyped and excited, looking forward, making us you know glad we own the system we own. You know, yeah. oh yeah, exactly. Feelings. No That's mention good. of the Neo, so that was it. Was nice to see just focus on the games and let the hardware be for later. Yeah. So Man, some of it is far. Yes, I mean let's not say, even though as exciting as it was, not to be a Debbie Downer, but some of the stuff is far. True, true. Uh, but uh, more dates in that conference than most conferences they've had. Definitely greatness does still await, but I mean, you know, we just had a fantastic game. At least we know when it's the coming past the most month, part. which but is uncharted coming. for. But indeed. Spider-Man. We are going to have even more greatness awaiting us. Twenty seventeen, man. Twenty seventeen. It's twenty seventeen. Big twenty eighteen. And then twenty nineteen. And then twenty twenty. Well twenty twenty is the Kojima game, but I mean, think about think about this. By the time you play that that uh, that Kojima game, there will be three more Call of Duties by then, and I'll be out of college. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Sure. Sorry, I, was... I might have a I might have a kid by the time that Kojima game comes out. <laughs> You'll be oh, recreating the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be crying with my child. Crying with your child when the game finally comes out <laughs> in a <laughs> big sea full of oil. <laughs> Xbox One and PC exclusive. <laughs> That's why I'm crying. And no, Xbox uh, and Windows 10 exclusive. Xbox and Windows Xbox 10. Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusive. Right. Something like that. No Mac. Yeah, you can't say Mac. <sighs> just say Win just say Microsoft exclusive. Microsoft exclusive. <laughs> You can play this on your window. You don't hear PlayStation do any of that shit where it's like, oh, it's exclusive. Because whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, we got to wrap this up. So yeah, all that good stuff and everything. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but with that, this has been the PSBS Place Position Podcast, episode 64, our big E3 Sony press conference special. I am your host, Code TPS and Body Boys. My host here is Andrew Ritis, double S. And. Emmett Watkins Jr., EJ161, PSN, and everything else. Yes. So, yep. Thanks for listening. I know it's another long episode. But we got a lot to cover. Um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we do because we didn't. I know we didn't cover Ubisoft. We'll figure something out with that. Um, but, but yeah. But like I said, thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy the rest of E3. There's gonna be some more stuff probably coming out, announcements and whatnot. Um, and all that, man. Thanks for listening, and hopefully see you guys next week. Mm-hmm.